four simple ESP32 and MicroPython projects that you should try as a beginner before attempting any intermediate or complex level projects using ESP32 and MicroPython. Number one, you should know how to control any GPIO pin on the ESP32 board. I've already explained this in my getting started video, MicroPython on ESP32. In that video, I explained how to install MicroPython firmware on the ESP32, how to set up Tony IDE, and how to control the onboard LED. If you can control the onboard LED, you can also turn any GPIO pin on or off. So I highly recommend watching my first video. I have added a link in the description. Number two, you should know how to read an analog sensor and print its value. In this example, I will use a printometer. If you learned how to read a printometer, then you can read any analog sensor. Number three, you should know how to read a digital signal on any GPIO pin and then control an output device connected to another pin on the ESP32. For example, you can use a push button to control the onboard LED, but to make it more interesting, I'm going to use a PIR sensor and control a buzzer. You might already know about PIR sensor. PIR stands for passive infrared. It's basically a motion detector so we will make a small security system whenever the PIR sensor is going to detect a human, the buzzer will turn on. If you learned how to control the buzzer, then you can control anything. For instance, if you want to control a light, you can connect a relay module instead of the buzzer and then connect the bulb to the relay. Number four, you should know how to display text and sensor values on the SSD1306 OLED display module. There is also another variant of the OLED display module that uses different set of instructions. So make sure you get yourself the SSD1306 version of the OLED display module. But this example, you can also use a potentiometer to read and display its value on the OLED display module. But to make it more interesting, I'll use a DHT21 temperature and humidity sensor. We will read the temperature and humidity values from this sensor and display them on the SSD1306 or LED display module. Number five, you should know how to display text on an I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD. Nowadays, this type of LCD is not used as much and I myself mostly use OLED displays, but maybe you might need it in some of your upcoming projects. So that's why I will also cover the I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD. I'm sure you now have an idea of which projects we are going to work on and which components we will need for those projects. So without any further delay, let's get started. Let me remind you one more time for the micro Python firmware installation on the ESP32, how to install and use Tony IDE and how to control the onboard LED. Watch my getting started tutorial, micro Python on ESP32. So controlling the onboard LED was the first project. In the second project, we are going to read this potentiometer and print its value to the console. But this simply connect the middle leg of the potentiometer to the GPIO 34 and the other two legs of the potentiometer to the 3.3 volt and ground pins on the ESP32. For the connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. We have a potentiometer connected to our ESP32 board. First, we import the necessary modules, ADC, analog to digital converter, and pin for handling GPIO pins and time for managing time-related functions. We specify that our potentiometer is connected to pin 34 on the ESP32. Then, we initialize the ADC with specific settings. We set the attenuation to 11 dB, which adjusts the input range for the ADC. In MicroPython for ESP32's ADC module, you can choose from these different attenuation values. Setting the ADC attenuation to 11 dB provides a higher attenuation value compared to lower values like 0 dB, 2.5 dB, and 6 dB. This means that the input voltage range that the ADC can accurately measure is wider. The benefit of using a higher attenuation value like 11 dB is that it allows the ADC to measure a wider range of voltages accurately. This can be useful in situations where you expect the input voltage to vary over a wide range or when you need to measure relatively high voltages accurately. And we set the ADC width to 12 bits for higher resolution. Choosing a higher resolution such as 12 bits means that the ADC can represent the analog signal with more precision because it can distinguish between a greater number of voltage levels. Specifically, a 12-bit ADC can represent the analog signal using two raised to the power 12 or 4096 different levels. 
The good thing about using a high resolution ADC is that it can give more precise measurements. This is handy when the analog signal has tiny changes or when you need very accurate measurements. We define a function called read potentiometer to read the value of the potentiometer using the ADC. In the main loop, we continuously read the potentiometer value using the read potentiometer function. We print the potentiometer value to the console. Finally, we add a short delay of 0.1 seconds before reading the potentiometer value again. In my getting started tutorial, I have already explained how to save and run the program, but let me do it one more time for you. Go to the run menu and click on the configure interpreter. On the interpreter tab, make sure you set the which kind of interpreter should Tony use for running your code to the micro Python ESP32. And make sure you select the correct communication port after doing this. Next, you can save the program. Make sure you select the micro Python device. Write the file name and save it with .py extension and that's it. Now you can click on the run button. You can see it's printing values to the console. As you can see when I rotate the knob of the potentiometer, the values change. Next, we are going to make a very basic security system using a PIR sensor and a 5 volt buzzer. For this, connect the voltage and ground pins of the PIR sensor to the ESP32 3.3 volt and ground pins. Connect the PIR sensor output pin to the ESP32 GPIO12. Connect the positive leg of the buzzer to the ESP32 5 volt pin. Ground of the buzzer module to the ground of ESP32 and the buzzer input wire to the GPIO18. For the connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. First, we import the necessary modules. Then we define which GPIO pins are connected to the PIR sensor and the buzzer. We set up the PIR sensor pin as an input and the buzzer pin as an output. The function trigger buzzer is used to turn on the buzzer waits for a short time and then turns it off. This function is used to make the buzzer sound when motion is detected. In the main loop, we continuously check if motion is detected by reading the PIR sensor. If motion is detected, we call the trigger buzzer function to sound the buzzer. If you want to power up your project using an external power supply and you want your program to automatically run, then you will have to save the code with the name main.py. By saving your code as main.py, you ensure that it runs automatically whenever the board is powered on or reset without needing to manually execute the script. This is particularly convenient for standalone projects or applications where you want the code to start running as soon as the board starts up without any user intervention. Next, we are going to start with the DHT21 temperature and humidity sensor and the SD1306 OLED display module. For this, connect the VCC and ground wires of the DHT21 temperature and humidity sensor to the ESP32 3.3 volt and ground pins. Connect the data pin to the ESP32 GPIO19. Connect the VCC and ground pins of the SD1306 OLED display module to the ESP32 3.3 volt and ground pins. Connect the SDA and SCL pins to the ESP32 GPIOs 21 and 22 respectively. For the connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. First, we import the necessary modules. Then we initialize the I2C communication for the SD1306 OLED display module and set its width and height. Next, we initialize the DHT sensor on pin 19. In the main loop, we continuously read temperature and humidity data from the DHT sensor. We print the temperature and humidity values to the console for debugging purposes. We clear the OLED display, then display the temperature and humidity values on it. Next, save the script on the MicroPython device. We are going to save it with the name main.py. Now, if I go and click on the run button, it will generate an error, no module named SD1306. To fix this, go to the Tools menu and click on Manage Packages. Search for the SD1306. From the search results, click on the SD1306 and install it.
Now we are going to do it for the DHT sensor. After installing the required libraries, now we can click on the run button. You can see it's printing the temperature and humidity values to the console and I can also see the same values on the OLED display module. Let me show it to you. Next, we are going to start with the I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD. Connect the VCC and ground pins of the I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD to the 5 volt and ground. Connect the SDA and SCL pins to the GPIO pins 21 and 22 respectively. For the connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. The code is pretty simple. We are importing the necessary modules. We have defined the I2C address, the number of rows and columns. 21 and 22 are the I2C pins on the ESP32 or I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD is connected to. Next, we initialize the LCD and then we print ESP32 and tutorial on the LCD. If we go to the top where we are importing the modules, you might have noticed these two lines. You can see we are importing LCD API from the LCD underscore API and I2C LCD from the I2C underscore LCD. These are actually two different files which are going to be stored on the ESP32 along with the main.py file. We need to save this code with the name lcd underscore api.py. And we need to save this code with the name i2c underscore lcd.py. Now we can save the main code which is going to run repeatedly with the name main.py and that's it. Finally, we can click on the run button. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.